Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're bringing back Maxi Ferreira. I am so sorry for not being able to roll my R's to pronounce your name properly. <laughs> How are you? And uh, welcome back. I'm doing, I'm doing great. great. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank for, you having for having me. Having excited, excited to be to be back, back and, and work, work on some, some fun demos. demos. Yeah, I uh, the demo that we did last time you were here was one of my favorites we've worked on, um, and it's been extremely popular, uh, but it actually recently broke, which is part of the reason why you're back. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a bit of a, a background on who you are, what you do? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, my name is, my name is Maxi. Maxi. I, I, work I work at, at HelpScout, HelpScout as a front-end, as a front-end engineer. engineer. Uh, uh, so, so I work, work at what other teams, other teams might be called like a front-end, front-end platform, platform teams. Team. So we, work we work with our design, design system. We uh, focus, focus mostly, mostly on like performance and front-end, front-end architecture, architecture, that type of stuff. stuff. Uh, uh, and, on and on the, the side, side, I like to work with sort of like, like platform, platform APIs. APIs. I like to I like test new new APIs, new frameworks. And one of the APIs I've been playing with the most recently is the View Transitions API. So, uh, so uh, if you follow, follow me on Twitter, Twitter or you might have, have seen some, some of my demos, demos on Twitter, on Twitter. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah I, just, I just I just find it like, like a really, really, really fascinating, fascinating and fun to play with API. So uh, I just love to spread the word about it. One second, I'm getting an echo and I'm not sure why. Um, oh, oh. Can y'all, let's see. Give me a quick... Uh, Quick check of your, wait, it's fixed or is it back? Maxi, can you give us a quick mic check? Yeah. yeah. Hello, hello. hello. That sounds See like it's coming through. Um, hold on one second. Let me try to get this fixed. I just moved my studio. We're in, if you've seen the show before, you might recognize this is a, a new space. Um, and so I am attempting to fix this in a way that doesn't cause bad blowback um all right so maxi one more check mm-hmm. hello can you hear me all right how's that y'all? Can, yeah okay that's better all right sorry about that uh and Perfect. we are <laughs> we are now in business okay um so good all right so yeah you um you've been working on uh, a lot of this stuff and uh and so the the demo that we did last time was for an API that has been renamed. It was, I think at the time it was called the shared element transition API. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the things that changed. The the API now is called view transitions. Uh and other like function function names and things like that also changed. That's why the API broke on us. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Um and so <laughs> let's go at a at a high level. Uh why like what is what is the view transitions API? Like what is it for? What problem does it solve? So the yeah, the main problem that it's trying to solve is to allow you to do kind of animating tra- transitions between between navigations, right? So um whether you're on a on a single page application or a multi-page application when you navigate to a completely different document. This API allows you to do that transition in a sort of like a seamless way with mm. a with a nice CSS controlled animation. Um, it can be used for other things. So I think the, the API has two sort of two parts. One is the same document view transitions part, which is everything you can do with JavaScript on the same document. You can transition uh, you know different elements on the page that not necessarily needs to involve like a page transition. So you can mm-hmm. you can you, we can we can play with some simple demos now with uh, just changing an element on the page from one place to the next, um, and then there is the cross document API, which is the new part. This right. this part di- didn't exist last year when we were talking about this API last year. We didn't have this, so this is uh, new. Well, th- and... this is what we had to fake, right? Like we had to bring in exactly. Uh, I think what was it Turbo Links, so that we could yes. simulate. Uh, a single page app to get these transitions. So you're saying that's built into the browser now. We don't need to bring in a JavaScript library to do single page app. We can do it with a multi-page app. Exactly. Yeah. That's, ah, the case. that's cool. That, this part, uh, that's still experimental sure. uh, for now, this 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 multi-page application support. Um, but it's yeah, it's coming and, and the the sort of the SPA version, which was experimental last year when we were 
we were playing with this, we had to enable a feature flag. Now it's enabled in Chrome by default. So if you're using Chrome, you have this feature enabled now. You don't have to sort of enable anything. Got it. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I mean, that's super cool. I'm, I'm really excited about just the, the whole possibility of all of this, right? It, it's such a cool, um, like, let me just let me just start this over because I, I just tangled my thoughts up in my head. I, I'm very excited by this because one of the reasons that I think people have had a hard time with multi-page apps is that when we introduced single page apps and we introduced mobile applications, we suddenly got used to this idea that when you navigate, you don't see a page refresh. You see, you know, sometimes just the content refreshes in the main window and you've got the header navigation and stuff. But then when you look at, at really nicely designed apps, you actually see these beautiful transitions where an element will move from one section of the page to the other. And without, without a way to do that in multi-page apps, that's a significant downside of moving away from a single page app architecture. And one of the, the kind of like most valid reasons that I think people push back on this idea of like, well, why don't you just use a, an MPA? Um, you don't need JavaScript. It's like, well, I, I need that, that app UX of, of moving between pages seamlessly. Um, and so why I find this so exciting is that it actually gives us a, a valid path forward to get that experience of an app-like navigation, an app-like experience of using the app without having to bring in more JavaScript. And so there's theoretically a world here where between all of the new CSS APIs, this view transition API, a lot of the new browser APIs, you could potentially build an entire app that doesn't ship any JavaScript and feels like a mobile app. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. pretty yeah, dang that's exciting. One of the main, main benefits is just shipping less JavaScript, doing sort of less work on the main thread as well. Like a lot of these... Um, uh, you know, there are a lot of tools for doing transitions on an mm. SBA, but they still, you know, they want, they're going to block the main thread. So having this uh, sort of built-in support, not having to pull in a third party to do this type of thing, it's, mm -hmm. it's also really, really great. Yeah, that's, that is extremely exciting. Okay, so um, right now, this is the, the View Transitions API is partially stable. You said the, the SPA support is, is stable but it's still currently mm -hmm. only in Chrome Canary or is, is the, the SPA part is in all versions of, of Chrome based browsers. It's on, it's on all versions of Chrome uh, based browsers. So it should be, if you're on edge or, uh, arc, any, uh, Chrome based browser should have oh, this enabled. Yeah. That's very exciting. And so the, mm -hmm. the piece, the experimental piece is the multi-page like navigating between yes. pages. And for that we need Chrome Canary. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. For that, we need Chrome Canary. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so this is one of those, you know, if you if you want to experiment, you want to play, definitely try this out. But do be aware that the, mm -hmm. the multi-page stuff isn't going to work in all browsers just yet. And similar to when we played with the shared transition element API or shared element transition API last year, it's subject to change. So um, is, as the team learns more about how this works, we might see that multi-page app setup uh, shift a little bit. Um, okay. So... We, what, uh, I mean, part of me just wants to jump into this and start coding, but I, I feel like, uh, is there anything else, like, as you've been building with this, what are you, what are you finding, like, feels the most magical about this API? Uh, I find it super interesting that you can do, like I was mentioning, you, you're not sort of restricted or limited to page transitions. You mm -hmm. can do... You know, element transition. You can you can you can do sort of like flip animations. You know, when you mm -hmm. have you know multiple elements on the page, and then you wanna re reorder them in some fashion. Um, so, if you wanna do that, you in with traditional technologies, you need a you know a bunch of JavaScript to right. calculate the position of the new elements and then move them around. Doing that type of animation with the with this view transitions API is very simple. We're gonna see an example of how we can do that. Um, it's not, I'll say, it's, if you have too many elements on the page, it's probably not the best thing because right now there are some sort of performance problems that the team is working on. So you have to uh, 
try not to have like hundreds of elements on the page moving at the same time. Mm -hmm. But for simple flip uh, transitions where you just want to you know move some boxes around on the page, it's really great because you don't have to worry about about anything really. The the browser takes care of sort of morphing the elements into the right places. Um, yeah, that to me is one of the things that I don't use very often because I mostly use for like page transitions. I want to transition mm -hmm. from one page to the next. Uh, but this also is a really nice feature. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Another another thing, and I just, uh, as I'm talking, I'm remembering that another thing that's very cool is that uh, last time we talked about the, so when this, when you do a view transition, the browser is basically taking like a, two screenshots of the before and after states of the of the page right mm -hmm. and then it will transition between them uh but the cool thing is that the sort of the after screenshot is not really a screenshot but it's a sort of like a live representation of the dom so if you have like a video plane or a gif or some animation plane it will continue to play during the transition oh. which uh which is very cool it allows you to do something if you have video playing like you want to do sort of like a picture in picture type of animation mm -hmm. um the video will continue to play, so it's not like you're, you know, uh, you know, in a frozen uh, state while you do the transition. That's super cool. I, I mean, I, I love like my that immediately got my wheels turning on like cool things that we could do. Where, you know, if if we can do something like that, then you could theoretically have the the Learn with Jason site. Um, right now, the the stream is being live cast, but it's only on one page, right? But if we had this, what we could do is on every page, you could have the player in the bottom right corner whenever we're live. And then when you go to the page where it's full size, it would you know animate to full size. And when you navigate away, animate back down. And all of that yeah. would be possible with, um, I, I assume we'd need, I mean, we'll need a little bit of JavaScript to get the player working and stuff. But eventually when we get the multi-page in full support, that's like it just it just works and that is yeah magical like that stuff is so cool i'm i'm just you know th this is one of the spaces that i think is uh it may be one of the most exciting in the web that's getting the least amount of of hype is this rapid advancement in the browser like the the amount of stuff that we can do with browser apis today is so incredible especially compared to what i remember back in the day where you spent all your time as a dev sort of wrestling with browser inconsistencies and now yeah. we're seeing browser apis steadily pull things in that are universally supported i mean partially because uh just about everything is chromium um, but like even on the, you know, the WebKit Firefox, like we've got excellent parity in terms of APIs and, and cross browser support. And you just get to steadily drop third party tools for these long lived, very stable, effectively future proof APIs. Like in a, once something ships in the browser, it's not going to break, right? Like the, the browser doesn't break backward compatibility. And I think that's such a, like, we don't talk enough about that because I've spent way too much time going back and fixing something because the framework shifted and changed its API. And now my stuff is broken if I try to update to the latest version. But in the browser, that's just not a fear, right? Unless you're using something experimental. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, oh, I love it so much. So uh, anyways, yeah. all that being said, um, how about we jump in and actually play with this a little bit? Yeah, yeah, right. I'd love to. I can't, I can't um, <laughs> And I thought we can actually start with sort of uh, like a very basics, like to talk about the API, um, and just see a very like minimalist, simple demo to see how For things sure. uh, work. And then we can implement it in an actual like uh, project. Awesome. All right. So let me really quickly uh -huh. just give a, a shout out. This episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. We've got uh, we've got white coat captioning. Rachel is here today. Thank you very much for being here. And that's made possible by the support of our sponsors. We've actually got new sponsors. Uh, I just haven't updated this part of the site yet. So we've got Netlify is staying on. Uh, and then we've got Vet2 Code and uh, NX New Relic and Pluralsight are are wrapping up the last quarter was the end of their sponsorship so thank you to them for all they did and i do have a couple spots available if anybody is interested in joining as a sponsor uh we were talking to moxie today so make sure you go in and uh do a little do a little follow over there um okay so yeah. with that being said i think you wanted me to be using chrome canary today or do you want to start like i'm in arc right now do you want to start here and then move over later or how do you want to do it uh 
we can start in Arc uh, okay. right now if you want to. So we can open like a code pen and start playing with a code pen. Great. So any Chrome based browser should work with this. Yeah. All right. Let me. I think I used GitHub for. Yeah, there it is. All right. Great. Yeah. Um, so then I can create a new pen. Do you want me to do anything with like a template or just go in? Uh, no, just regular HTML. We're going to use, yeah, HTML and CSS. Okay. Yeah, nice. So let's start with uh let let's, let's start with a box. Let's do a box, a little red box or blue box, um, and uh, we're gonna see how we can sort of animate that with just a tiny bit of JavaScript. Um, I'll go with with. Let me open this. Two hundred and oh, I can use this, and then we'll set a background. Oh, one. that's all right. Nice, perfect. Um, and now let's declare uh, sort of like a like a clicked version, uh, like a clicked class for this box, where we're gonna maybe move it to the right a little bit. Okay. Um, should I use like relative position, or what do you think? We can do we can do either. I so we can do like just uh, yeah, left. 300 pixels or so. We we'll do. Okay. I guess we have to do position absolute or relative or. I think relative should work. Yeah. Okay. And so then if I add this. Yeah. It perfect. Jumps over. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and now let's do some JavaScript to actually you know apply that class okay. when we click on the box. And we'll do a document dot query selector uh, box, and then we can box dot add event listener listener for click, and we will do box dot class list add clicked. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Perfect. look at it go. Okay, so then yeah. we we actually uh, probably want to toggle. Uh, toggle. Yeah. yeah, toggle. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. There we go. Uh, so now we can actually do uh, do a transition. So what we can do is uh, wrap that call to the toggle uh, of the class in a in a in a transition. So we can do um, document dot start view transition okay and that takes a call that that's a uh yeah it takes a callback and in that callback we will do the dom update which in this case is that adding that class okay yeah and if we try that now we should see a nice little fade fade in fade out animation look at right? that okay yeah. So what's happening here is, as I was mentioning before, when we call, when we make the call to start view transition, the browser sort of takes a screenshot of the page, of the entire page, not just the box, right? And then it um, calls that callback that we are updating the DOM in that callback. And at the end of the callback, it will take another screenshot. And then once you have the, the two screenshots, it will sort of transition between them. Mm -hmm. The default. The default transition is to do this fade in, fade out. So the old screenshot will fade out and the new one will fade in at the same time. And that's why we see that that sort of fade in, fade out animation. Um, we can uh, control these with CSS. Uh, but we can do as well is we can tell the we can tell the browser mm -hmm. that a particular element, so in this case our box, is the same element both on the old screenshot and in the new screenshot. And then the browser will say, okay, so this element moved, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna do like a move animation. I'm gonna move it to the place where it's on the new screenshot. And to do that, we have to apply a, a view transition name to the box. So on the CSS, we can define a property called view transition name. And we can give it any name as long as it's unique. We can call it box. Yeah. Okay. And, and now you immediately see that it's moving around. Oh my yep. god, that is so 
wonderfully simple. Like that is that's it's, it's just brilliant <laughs> to me that you can do something like this in what we it's so including the wrapper three lines of code. We took something that was originally very like it popped, you know, like it, it's mm -hmm. an instant change, which is fine. I mean, we, we use apps like that all the time, but with three lines of code, we made it into this nice actual animated transition. And I can't really think of any other way that you could do that. I guess you could set like yeah. for, for this one, you could set the, the transition to, you know, 200 milliseconds, all whatever, but that's not going to hold up when you start modifying the actual Dom. Exactly. Yeah, we can do. Yeah, for for certain things, we can do like uh, translate. Uh, you know, animate the translate mm -hmm. uh, sort of position and things like that. Uh, but this will take care of like a bunch of things for us. We, it, it, it automatically translates color, uh, or if if it if it disappears from the screen, or and it appears again, we can control those sort of like a enter and exit animations individually. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like you said. To me, this is a perfect example of a really good abstraction because it's very simple. We just called a function, we applied a CSS a property, and we have a really powerful, you know, feature now in our hands. And we can customize it with CSS, and we can do other advanced stuff. But the surface is very like the API surface is very simple. We didn't yeah. have to do much. Uh, I so, saw a question in the chat just now asking about: Is there any sort of keyframing available? So, can you can you do anything complex with these, or is it sort of pretty simple stuff? Yeah, you can customize the transition with keyframe transitions as well, of keyframe animations. So cool. you can define a custom keyframe animation in CSS with all your keyframes, and then uh, apply that to the transition. Yeah. Nice. And and is this smart enough that if I like rotate uh 180 degrees, will it it yep. <laughs> <laughs> look at it we go? Can change, you can change color, you can change the size as well. So we can play around with some things. Um and it will transition all of them. So cool. Yeah. I also love yeah. that this is a top level property now instead of having to be like the the transform with like a million sub properties. Uh, that's right. Such a nice little upgrade. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, and and one way we can we can also sort of uh, control this animation is with um, a selector of a um, pseudo element mm -hmm. that is called view view transition group. So okay. We can define a new sort of CSS. Um, selection uh view transition group is it double and, uh yeah that's that's right okay. oh yeah it's double it's double yeah double column and then in parentheses here we have to pass the the name of what is the element that we're controlling so in this case it's the box right okay and here is where you can define your custom animations if you want if you want to do something simple we can uh just just overwrite the animation du duration so you can say animation duration to like three seconds or something. And we'll see how it will still use the default animation, but it will be uh, you know much slower. Uh, we can you know we can play with the the, the timing function, so mm -hmm. adjust like a custom easing function, things like that as well. Is it uh, um, animation timing function? Is that right? I think yeah, I think so. You can do like ease easing out or one of those. So it kind of slows down at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There is a, a more organic. Yeah, there is a. Uh, I can actually. I mean, give you this one. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna paste one in the chat where. Uh, what is based on the on the pink chat? Okay. That should be like a like a sort of bouncy animation. Yeah, that's your. <laughs> yeah, it goes over to the right and then comes back. And then if we take yeah. this back down to the default. Yeah. Be nice. Oh, that's whoa, that's way too fast. That's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe take it down to like one second. Yeah. Look at it go. Like that's that's pretty fun, right? 
It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We can also uh, sort of inspect the animations in the in, in Dev Tools. Okay. So if you go to um, if you pop the animations panel, which is you have to uh, you have to hit escape. Hit escape. Uh yeah. If you hit escape, oh, yeah, there you go. And then on that little console. Oh, there is that kebab menu. Uh, yeah, there you can go to oh, animations. Go. Okay. There you go. Let me let me pull this to the side so we can see it a little more easily. Yeah. And then we've got so, our animations tab here. Yes. So now if you uh is that the animation? Oh, that's uh, the wrong one. Which one that is that? might it? be something else. With readout, with readout. Where's our box? Uh, so I... if you do uh if you uh, you can pause the the panel and then click on click on the box. And yeah, that, that should be it. And now you can ah, you know, scroll scroll that little pink bar to the that one to the right and you can control the oh cool the animation. That's dope. So uh it's it's very useful, especially when you have like multiple elements on the page like transitioning at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um it's really cool to see, you know, what's going on on the page. Well, yeah, just being able to to kind of all right, I'm I'm 250 milliseconds in. Where is everything on my uh, on my screen? Right. Especially like I do this all the time, where I'm <laughs> I'm like trying to get three things to to look natural as they move together, and it it doesn't. And so I just have to like bump by 10 milliseconds at a time until it starts starts to feel right. This I didn't know I I had no idea this panel was here. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> foolish because I could have saved myself a lot of heartache. It's very yeah, it's, it's super useful. Uh, I don't work with animations too much, but mm -hmm. if you are uh, you know, I know that designers love to sort of customize the animation down to the millisecond, you know, mm -hmm. like you were saying, like everything has to be perfect. And this is very like very tool, a very cool tool to do that. You can also control like the, you know, the the delay if you have a delay for your animation, things like that. Um and on the left you you, you see we, we now see here those all those different um on the bottom left you see all this view transition, view transition. These are all the different pseudo elements that the browser adds to the page when we do a transition. Um, and we can sort of customize each one of them with, with CSS. Um, and if we go to the probably the elements tab, oh, oh we're on the elements tab. Yeah, but I just got to pull this yeah. down so we can see. Yeah, so we can see them there at the top. Oh, right. cool. OK, yeah. So those are added only during the the duration of the transition, and then when the transition finishes, they get removed, right? Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. So now that we sort of got the sort of the basics, we can jump to a more um, sort of real world demo. And I have a repo here that I prepared. So let me. And now for this one, I should open the link up uh, Chrome Canary, right? Um, yes, we, uh, we can. Stay in Arc for the first part, but we can uh, we can jump directly to Canary if um, because we're gonna need for the second part, which we're gonna talk about this cross document. Um, okay, why don't yeah, why don't I minimize this and then I will pull up Canary, which I put here. There it is, and you sent me a repo. I will send you the repo. Um, I will also share it on the Twitch chat. I can open here. I'll I'll share it because I have it right here, and oh, that yes. uh, also puts it into my automatic link saver. All right, so here is our link, and we're everybody bear with me while I get signed into all of my accounts because. All right, am I even going to need this? Actually, you know what? It happened so fast; it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, don't, I don't think you need. It. <laughs> You're gonna need to sign in. You just need to. Or we're just gonna clone the repo and, um, Got and it. just start to play with locally. Okay. So let me open up one of these and then we will get into GitHub and then Okay, and then GitHub repo clone.
I see someone else in the chat discovered the animation stuff, oh, which my uh, Chrome has. Chrome DevTools have so many like hidden features. I was watching a like a talk by Adios Money a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, and so many things. He shared like a hundred tips for the Chrome DevTools. Ah, incredible stuff! Like it, it's it really is one of those. Um, it does so many things that it's just, you know, you can spend a whole career trying to become an expert in it. And it's, you know, it's like any other like sufficiently complex piece of technology. The the 80% is pretty fast to learn. And then that, that remaining 20% can take you the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've got the, I've got the repo open here. Um, oh, wait, let me actually open this folder. I just cloned it. I didn't actually open it. So nice. I'm going to go into GitHub. And there it is. All right, so here is our site. It is a, uh, I think I saw that it was an Astro site. It says it, it right is an Astro, repo name. yes, it's an Astro blog. Um, very simple. Uh, it's based on a template that is on the Astro website. I okay. think it's called Stablo, which is a very nice looking blog template. Great. Um, Should I just start? But, there? Yeah, you can you can run it. You can do npm run dev. Okay. Um, I can take a look. It's very. Uh, I remove a lot of things from the template, so I only have we only have two pages now. We have a like home page and. Oops. Uh, I think I'm missing out zero. Three thousand. There you go. Okay. Okay. So you have like a home page, and then uh, you can open one of the. Articles, that's it. We have two pages. Okay. Um, and can you, uh, let's see. Can you uh, resize the browser a, a tiny bit, like make it, oh, there you go. So that we can see because we, the first demo, we want to see this grid layout. So if mm. it's only, yeah, there you go. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to do sort of like a, like a filter. Uh, we're gonna, so the first part, we're going to play with this JavaScript API for sort of same page transitions. Okay. So we want to use what we saw before on the code pen to sort of filter this list of elements in a, like a nicely animated fashion, right? Oh, um, right, because we can... We can uh, yes, we have those... To... Uh, Exactly. That's only partially implemented, so we have to finish implementing that that uh, sort of uh, list. Um, so that is in our React component. Okay. And this entire uh, it's called let me it's called tag selector. There you go. This entire website is just Astro components, except for this component. So um, we're gonna have to do some like hiding and showing elements on the page. So we're going to be using any React features or anything. We're just going to uh, use React for a tag selector. OK. Um, so yeah, the first thing we want to do is we want to finish implementing this, this use effect. Um, so we have the list of articles on the page there, and we just want to uh, you know, hide the ones that don't have the selection. Got it. OK, um, so the articles category is the selection. So on this selection contains the selection of we can actually console log this if if uh, that will be yeah, um, more useful. Let's, let's but selection contains the list of selected tags. So when you click on one of those tags like technology or lifestyle, they will be added to the selection. Okay. And so then um, if I pop this out, I'm gonna put this back at the bottom. And then we'll head to the console. We get our list of of these and then as we add things to it we get a list mm -hmm. okay yeah so that makes sense so that's... then the the work that we need to do is in our articles we want to uh probably map over them right mm -hmm. and if and then the articles contain their their category or their tag in uh, in a data attribute. So I um, think you can access with data dot category. That should be, that should give us, 
if I can spell that right, um, category. And then if I look down here, I can see uh, the span. Oh, that, that's in a different. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's th in a this different. Is, component. This is correct, though. Let's yeah. Let's uh, yeah. I, I I don't know if data or data set is is. I, I use data set, but I don't know if. Oh, it is data set. Um, you're right. You're right. I think it's data set. Yeah. Uh, so then we can say if the selection, if the selection yeah, contains exactly. or includes, includes. Includes, yes. Yes, it's include. <laughs> then we can add article dot class list add. Uh, we can no, add the um, remove. Oh, uh, remove the hidden class. Yeah, hidden. Exactly. Else, article class list. Add hidden. Yeah. Okay. So then, theoretically, mm, articles dot map. Do I need to do something to make these? Uh, I think we have to do for for each because this is oh, uh, right, not, it's not really an array. It's like an array like. Yes. Type of thing. Okay. Yeah. I have and oh, I think this is working. So click on one of the tags, uh, and this should yeah. yeah. So I think what we should we should uh, consider now is the the empty, empty state. state. So when we have no tags, okay. With, so oh, no then selection. I need uh, if so we can just do like oh we can add that to the first uh, to the if. If so, I was just so going to say, if selection length is less than one, uh, we can just return, so we won't add anything. So that way, uh, we should get our categories. Yes. Is that going to is that going to work, or do you want me to do it a different way? I think that if you unselect if you unselect technology, if you click on technology again, it will. Oh, it not breaks, doesn't it? everything but yeah so i think what we can do is in the inside the for each uh the the ifs can be like if um if not selection that length okay so let me or the other thing yeah oh boy what's happening else if <laughs> And then we have to remove the class hidden as well, right? In that, in this side. Oh, got it. Okay. So I guess we could we could do it like. Uh, yeah. One of those. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. so and I now, think this should work now. Empty, filtered, empty. Okay. All right. Great. So then, Perfect. if we look at yeah. this in the grid view, we can see that a little more obviously, that things are mm -hmm. being filtered as expected. Nice. Okay, great. Uh, so now what we can do is we can wrap our logic inside of a, a transition. So we can do like document dot star view transition. Just right here. That will give us as well. Yeah. And this is going to be our wrapper. We'll move the whole thing in. And then would you do it like this or do you want to do it kind of around the outside? Uh, I think it's either way it works. Uh, yeah, we can do it around the around the for each maybe. Yeah, let's do it around the outside because I, I was thinking that that might because this would start it again for every DOM element, which I have no idea oh, what that exactly if it matters. But this at least uh, we we're just doing it once. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would actually give us an error probably because we can't. I think we can't start a transition while another transition is happening. Look how nice this looks. I mean, it's it such already a, looks pretty nice, right? <laughs> it's like you just don't have to do anything, and it and it already feels so good comparatively. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's it's so cool. Like you can just sprinkle these view transitions around, and just this magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, like I can already feel this is going to become like a central part of the way that I that I work because it just makes. Mm -hmm. 
such a such a small difference, but such a good difference. And it 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 really feels wonderful to work with this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's also really good for like backwards compatibility. You don't, I mean, mm -hmm. other browsers. If you do, uh, of course, you have to check that if document dot star view transition doesn't exist, then you you have to do the dumb update manually. Right. But it sort of degrades gracefully really well because other browsers would just not have the animation, but they will continue to work, right? Yeah. Oh, dang. So cool. So, so cool. Uh, okay. So actually, why don't we show how to do that real quick? So if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to make this like, we would say, let's see, uh, uh, filter articles, and then we would take each of these and we would put this up in here, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we wanna check, we can say if start view transition in document, then we would document start view transition and we would filter articles. Yep. Else we would just filter the articles. And that way we've got backward compatibility. It's still going to work even if the browser doesn't support this yet. Um, but this is, you know, so it, it's a little bit more code, but we, now we don't have to worry about backward compatibility. Like this will function in every browser as long as, uh, I mean, honestly, as far back as we can probably support these days, right? Yeah, yeah, this is all, yeah, we're not doing anything special. And then the CSS... If we add any custom CSS, that will just get ignored by the browser. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this will work everywhere. Incredible. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's next? Nice. So uh, now what we can do is we can use the, the view transition name tag, uh, CSS tag. Uh, we can apply one for each one of these cards. And then instead of like doing this fade in, fade out, we can just move them around uh, on the page as we filter. Okay. So to do that, we have to go to the uh, have to go to the card dot astro component. Okay. Oops. Let me undo everything that I just did there because I was about to try to do it the hard way. I think, um, and it was <laughs> nope, not that. Well, I guess we can do it from card with JavaScript astro. as well. Yeah, but we're just gonna apply um, probably to that wrapper div. We can apply it to the wrapper div. Okay. Um, we're gonna we're gonna add a style tag, and we're gonna set this view transition name to. Um, we need a prefix, so we're gonna be like image or card. It could be card dash, and then we can do the use the slug. Post that slug. Uh, post that slug. And I'm yes. gonna need to make this into. One of these. Uh, yes, we need the back ticks and. Oh come on. You. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. So we need we need the prefix because uh, the the name needs to start with uh, with a, a letter. It can't start with a number, and some of these lags starts with numbers. Mm. So. Um, yeah. And I just, guess if you were going to do measure, a bunch of these, this is also just kind of a, you know, a, a CSS style, like a prefix to help you logically group things if you're going to debug them or something like that as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so with this, let's see how it looks with just adding this, this to the page. It's, it oh. should start to move things around already. Oh, beautiful. Look at it go. Amazing. Yeah, everything Power. goes to the right place. We don't. We didn't have to oh. do any JavaScript. We only added that CSS property. Oh, it's so cool! It's beautiful. It's very, it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, and like we mentioned before, uh, this, this, uh, we only have like I think fifteen articles or so, or fourteen articles on the page. If we had hundreds of of pages, then uh, hundreds of articles, then we should probably do some something like. Only add this view transition name, uh, you know, when you need it. So we would do this with JavaScript, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, it does it doesn't 
doesn't affect the uh, performance. So yeah, and then there's a, a question from Lazar in the in the chat about um, getting seamless transitions in Astro with the View Transitions API. I think we're about to do that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, we're so, gonna do so like a sit tight, Lazar. We're about to show you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be like a page navigation transition mm -hmm. as well. Um, but for now, I wanna to also take like now that we have this v, this nice sort of um, sort of transition on the same page that we have here, mm -hmm. we can play a little bit with adding some CSS rules to to uh, customize the the en enter and exit animations that we apply. Okay. So there is a, a styles of CSS file uh, that is empty. Yeah, should be empty. And here we can, we're going to start by defining a couple of keyframe animations. Very simple. So we're going to define one uh, called scale out. And that will be, that will have a two property or block. Uh, and that will just set the scale to zero. And then we're going to define another one called fade in that will set the opacity to one. We don't need to define the from here because the it will use whatever is the the existing um, opacity and scale here, right? Okay. Uh, and now, if we want to define an exit animation, so let's say we want that when one of those cards disappear, we uh, we fade we scale it out, right? Okay. So what we can do is we can target the um, we don't need to define a new keyframe. We, oh, we can just you. use that scale out keyframe. But we can target the pseudo element um, view transition. You remember we had all those view transition dash something. Mm -hmm. This is called view transition old, O L D. Old. Uh, old. Got old. It. Yes. Um, and this is the sort of the old screenshot. Remember we had those two screenshots. This mm -hmm. targets the old one. And here we can set the animation to scale out. And, Do I need um, to set any? I, I can let everything else be default, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see how it works. Maybe it, everything uses uh, default, or maybe we, we can set the animation name. Oh, uh, we, we're missing something. So we need to when we pass the the we declare the pseudo element, we need to pass in parentheses which are the elements that we're targeting. Oh, right. In this case, we're targeting everything, which we just use an asterisk here. And we're gonna actually try this out now, and let's see. I think it kind of worked. Got a little weird. It got got a little weird, but oh yeah, there there is there's a little weirdness, and we're missing we're missing one more thing. So we wanted to find the exit, the exit animation, and now the the to do that we need to target this old screenshot only when there is no new screenshot right for this element oh, okay so we can do that with the um, the uh, doing after the the asterisk we can do colon or after the, the closing parenthesis we can do colon uh sorry outside of the parenthesis oh oh got it and we can do colon only child so the the reason this works is there is an image pair sort of view transition group and that contains the old screenshot and the new screenshot. When the old screenshot is the only child, then we know that this is sort of like an exit transition because there is no new screenshot. Um, let's do, yeah, let's try that, see if that. I think I'm, I'm trying to take shortcuts and it's not, there it is. I think, yeah, I think you see that scale out. We can also do animation duration to like one second or something to better see. Um, yeah, I could call it. Let's slow it down. Okay, so now you'll see it's much slower. And they just disappear off into the mm -hmm. sunset. <laughs> it looks weird because they're off. You know, one is very fast and the other one is very slow. But yeah, that's sort of the, the, the effect that we're going for. <laughs> Um, but we can also do is we can customize the enter uh, sort of sort of uh, animation, which is we're going to do the same thing, but now we're targeting the new screenshot exactly. And this is also going to be also, only child. 
that's also only child because that means that we have a new screenshot, but we don't have an old screenshot. That means this is a new element on the page. Um, and we can do fade, uh, fade in. Yeah, fade in. Let's try. Okay. It. Oh, and we have the the other elements are moving fast, so we should probably do. Let's try to do a view transition group. Um, yeah, let's do a selection for view transition group, and also set the animation duration to one second here. We need that. We need the asterisk as well. All right, right, after. right. I think I have. I'm not seeing the fade up. in. Yeah, it's it's popping in, not fading in, and I think that means I messed something up. Do I need to set a default opacity or anything? Uh, I don't think we need to. Let me see. I have a. Oh, maybe maybe we do. Let's let's set it. Let's set the from opacity to zero, and try that. There yeah, it it's is. much better. And we can also, of course, do like a scale scale in. So mm -hmm. if we want to uh, also customize, um, yeah, we're going to apply both a fade in and scale in. Okay. Um, and then scale in animation. For this, should I like add a new? Yes, we can do we can do that. We can also do the fade, uh, the scale out, and do the reverse uh, with the get, reverse keyword. Can you double like that? Uh, would that work? Like put in two animation names. I'm not sure if that works. We can try it. That seems the way like that I have it. The way that I tested chaos. this was to do the, the entire animation. Did okay. it work? It it did not. Um, I don't know oh, if okay. that's because I got the syntax wrong or what, but. Why don't we just drop this right down here? Oh, yeah. And then I can w scale from from zero as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Beauty. Looks very nice. And that's great. Like, that just, it, it feels immediately very appy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we did, and we only touched like some CSS. Mm -hmm. We only added like really one line of JavaScript. And because I set entire... this in the transition group, I can actually leave those out now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that applies to everything. Great. I, this is yeah, this is so, awesome. Okay. One limitation of this API that I know the team is working on, so this is something that might come in soon, is that the only way we can sort of select which. Uh, which screenshots we want to control is either globally using the asterisk mm -hmm. or by name, by name to refer to a specific element. We can't do sort of like by group. Let's say I had other elements on the page, but I only want to apply this to our cards, for example, right. everything that starts with card. That is not supported at the moment. Um, so if you do like, if we try to do like card dash asterisk to match, you know, all the cards, mm -hmm. that won't work. Got it. So that is coming up. I'm pretty sure I, the team has received a lot of feedback about that. So I'm pretty sure that's something coming up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I think we can jump to the new stuff, which is the MPA support for view transitions. Yes. Um, and for this, we actually need to enable a feature flag in Chrome Canary. Okay. Uh, so you can go to about or Chrome flags. So, yes. Uh, search for view transition and that one, yes, the one for for documents. Okay, relaunching. Yep. Perfect. All right, and there we and go. And I we... could go back to yeah. Uh, and the the way we enable this is very simple. We just have to go to our layout. 
uh, .astro file, which contains our, you know, our HTML layout. And we have to add a meta tag here in the head, in the head element. Okay. So anywhere in the head, things. we can add a meta, uh, a meta tag. The name is view transition, view dash transition. And the content is same origin. I'm not sure if there are other options available. I think same origin is the only one that is sort of supported right now. And, and with that, we already have, so if you navigate from this page to a blog post, we should already see <laughs> things on <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, this is now not watch an this SPA. too. Watch, watch, this everybody watch SPA. it. Yeah. I am clicking the forward and backwards buttons and getting transitions <laughs> and it's updating like the URL is changing. So this is, so this is a multi-page app, right? Like we didn't just make this, this into is a, a single page app. No, there is no class. We can disable JavaScript if you, if we want to. Oh my God. Okay, yes. Let's disable JavaScript because MPA. that is freaking cool. Okay. JavaScript is disabled. I'm going to reload for good measure. Magical. Oh, we got the white state because the, there was a JavaScript plugin handling the. But, but yeah, look at it. Like, work. yo, this is so freaking cool that that just works. I I don't even know how to. Ah, uh, I love it. I love it when the browser <laughs> just does these things. Because like, okay, can we talk for just a second? If you were going to implement this in JavaScript today how much work would that be? Like how much effort are you going to put in to making this thing function? Like you've got to pay attention to the browser history. You've got to pay attention to where things are on the page. You've got to add these effects to, you know, do the, the flip, which is what is flip? It's first, last invert play. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's what, hold on. Let me, let me verify that I'm right on that. Um, you have to remember what flip means. That's another thing. You have yeah, to you have to remember that. what it means. <laughs> um, and let's see, flip animations, flip, flip a clip, flip a clip. Uh, has anybody defined it? Flip. Uh, should be. You know, it's okay. We're. No, that flip your animations. That's, the, I think, one of the OG articles. Flip. Uh there First, last, invert, play. Oh, my goodness. My memory is a steel trap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so you, you have to do all of this calculation where you you know the start point, you know the end point. You have to, like, work backwards to to figure out how to get it from the start point to the end point. And then you, you have to, like, do that calculation, set up an animation loop. And, you know, you can get plugins and stuff to do all this. But then you have to catch the page navigation and you have to simulate the page navigation using something like a router. And so you're either building all this yourself, which is a huge pain, or you're grabbing different libraries to make these things work, which is fine individually until you're trying to get the libraries to interop, in which case you find yourself in like a custom hook or, or use effect or, or whatever kind of uh, tricky situation. And all of that, like hundreds of lines of JavaScript just disappears with one with what flip meta and tag. meta tag. <laughs> what absolute magic. Like, oh my goodness, this is, oh, oh, what a great time to be alive. <laughs> it is it is a great time. Uh, yeah, so, so, some people call it like the, I know that for CSS, a lot of the features that are coming with CSS, um, call it like a CSS golden era because there's mm -hmm. really a lot of features coming to the platform, um, like uh, um, the scroll-driven animations, of course, view transitions, there are new elements are coming. So yeah, it's a really great time to be a web dev. Yes. Okay. So we added the the one meta tag and we got the the cross page mm -hmm. transitions. Um what what else like what else should we see uh, here? And we can do uh what we did last time, mm -hmm. but uh in this page, which is when you open one of those articles, that image, that header image, uh, you know, exists in both the thumbnail and 
the article. So what we can do is similarly to how we did with our box in our original um, code pen, mm -hmm. we can say to the browser, okay, these two elements are the same element actually. So I want you to morph them in place. I want you to move it in place instead of fading one in and fading the other one out. Um, and we do this by just applying the same uh, the same view transition name to both elements. Got it. Okay. So one is in the card component. So if you go back to the card.astro component. We um, are doing it we with will find... the... Yes, we have that transition name for the entire uh, card. Mm -hmm. So we can define a new one for just oh. the image. Oh, I understand. Um, okay, so this is my this is my image, Do, and I want the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we want the picture and we want to apply that transition name to this image. So this can be like, instead of card, it can be image. Um, yeah, okay. exactly. And now we want to apply the same name to the, yeah, the same tag to the card in our po blog post, which is in, um, what's the name of the file? I think it's slug. It's slug. Oh, slug. Dot Astro. Astro yeah. Got it. And we've got our picture, so, so I can There's do... the other picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the full size picture of the blog post. All right. So So now by doing that, everything is still working and uh, uh so good. <laughs> okay. So one thing that I just noticed is this one seems to be beneath. Is there a way that I can like change the the stack order and put that one as like higher z index or something uh yes we can but we need to find the so this is one of the things we would probably have to do dynamically because okay. we can either remove the transition names from the other elements or uh we can apply like a higher z index to the one that we're clicking on that's what i was thinking is that we could um, we could do the higher z index um mm -hmm. And to do that, we just we just need to do that in JavaScript. I believe so because you need to know which one is the uh, unless we can do with CSS something like I haven't tried it, but I, I guess we can see it with CSS. We can select. Uh, we can use the active. Um, oh yeah, maybe the active pseudo or selector. Yeah, so let's go um, with active. Yeah, active. Although I'm not sure that will work because what we want to do is we want to find the higher Z index on the view transition screenshot, but that doesn't get an active state, right? Because that's but it would just be within, wouldn't it? So if we did, uh, if we did active, and uh, it's then... not within because those are at the top of oh, the crap. yeah, those are the very top. You're right. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. So. Yeah, that is a that is a good question though. And so we would we would need to do something yeah, like um a little just a little bit of uh when you click the link. We can this is actually pretty I think this is pretty straightforward to solve. Let's let's do this. Let's do a script and inside of it we're going to uh do a document dot query selector all and we'll say if it's a a link like this, um, we will then say, or no, got to add event listener. Okay, so what we're going to do is, oh, I have to do a whole. Yeah, I think we need to do for each one. Fine. Okay. Um, so then I can add my link, event listener, and then and we will say uh, e we'll go e target uh, query selector image and then styles. Z uh, index yeah. equals, or wait, we should do it. We should, as is tradition, 
<laughs> okay, but I've done it wrong. E target. Can I just do it like this? No. Okay, fine. I'll do E target. And then we can say. this up here. Oh, let me say Dave. That still doesn't like it. No. You, L is of type unknown. Oh, TypeScript. TypeScript. Possibly. It's not possibly null. How dare you? I'll just do one of these. Come on. <laughs> How about that? How about you, Hush? <laughs> you will definitely... Oh, come on. Well, you know what time it is. <laughs> time for any? TS ignore? <laughs> get out of my... Get out of my code. There you go. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see if this works then. So, no, I did it wrong. So, um, the so what we can do is so be, because you're applying the Z index to the image, but what's transitioning here is not actually that image; it's a is a screenshot of the image. Oh, you're right. So, but what we can do is we can set the um, instead of applying the view transition name to all the cards or to all the images mm -hmm. we can apply to only the image that is going to transition right so we can do here the same selector you have except uh, instead of applying the z index we're applying the view transition name okay okay that makes sense uh, yeah so we're going work. to um view transition name name uh and we can set this to um like something like yeah, that. Yeah, image active. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we need to match that in the. Oh, we were in the slug. We should probably do this on the index page, right? On the index page only. Uh, I think so. Yes. Okay. Uh, that I'm gonna look in here real quick. Index. Yep. And then we'll drop it down at the bottom. And so that will update the clicked one to have image active, which means that in slug, I need to change mm -hmm. this to be image active. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So instead of being one of these, it'll be one of these. And theoretically, it will break entirely because I did something wrong. <laughs> Um, let's have um, this console log and make sure that I actually did a thing. Here's my index. I can also give up on this if you had something else you wanted to show. I don't want to burn the rest of our time trying to debug this. Uh, no, we can, I found, we, we can also do, uh, let's see. We can, we can give the, I think this is important also to show. Uh, Ooh, the only thing that, that I want, but we can show this very quickly. The um, sort of how to how to disable or or adjust some of these animations for uh, users that might have the reduce motion uh, setting enabled on the browsers. Okay. Oh, is it is it style not instead of styles? Cannot read properties of null. So it's actually not finding our console.log L. And that's the image. Oh, the target is the image. Fascinating. So if oh, I click okay. here, though, it's the span. So then I would need to like bubble up to the. Oh, this sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so we'll have to find out how to get up to the parent 
And so this is this is a fun loop. We will. Uh, or is there a way to do? Like, well, if we do current current target, current target, that should be always the the anchor that time. is yes. always the link. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is what we want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn off the prevent default. I'm going to turn this off, and then that theoretically. Okay. So okay, that but did now what we, we need to remove. Well, kind of. It is what we want. Now we still need to remove all of the other. We're still applying the transition to all the cards, right? Right. So back to the so styles. So if we go to the. So if we go to the index, and you go to the where well, we're applying that style. Uh, oh, it's in the cards, right? Oh, it's in the cards. Sorry, yes. And so we're going to take yeah, this out. That one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. Let's let's remove the one on the card as well, just to see if this works. And okay. then we can figure out how to. So there's one at the top. They have that one. Yeah. Of course, that doesn't work. Um, yeah. I know how undo works. So I'm just going <laughs> to do one of these. Okay, so, so now these... we yeah we broke this, but the it should fix the other one, right? And it it does like this now looks like what we want, where it uh, it pops in, and then if I come out here and I grab one of these, it goes to the right place. So so this looks really good. Okay. Yeah, um, but we lost the the other ability, so I guess. Thinking, what do we do the inverse? So we apply, we again apply the style to all of the to the card and the images like we had it before. We roll back and apply to all the images as well. And then on the click event, instead of adding one tag. We are going to yeah. Let, let's also roll this one back, the one in the slug, to use the to use the slug. Yeah. Okay. So now here, instead of adding one, what we can do is let's remove all of the V transition. Like I, I don't know how much work is gonna be, but what we can do is okay. Let's remove all of the other view transition names from all other elements except for this one image. Oh, I got you. Okay, so then mm -hmm. we would have the the current target. We would get the const image um, would be this one, and then we would need to. Uh, you want to do it on all the cards? Uh, I want to do it on all the cards. So everything everything that has a view transition tag applied. Okay, so the way that the uh, cards are set up is we've got the the style view transition name. Um, so to target those, let's target. Uh, oh, we can add, oh, this has a, the class article. Has the class article. So we can we can we can grab all articles and set the view transition name to okay undefined or something. Const articles, and that's going to be document query selector all article, and then we can do articles for each. And we can say article dot style dot oops view transition hmm. name equals just turn it off empty yeah okay yeah and then do we want to we get need the... to do the same thing for all the images as well yeah for all images inside of the articles yeah yeah exactly. Left hand assignment. Uh, 
Articles. Article is possibly null. Style does not exist on type element. That seems... <laughs> What am I? Oh, TypeScript. No, how do I make it? <laughs> All right. Is this gonna cause an error, like a build error? Or... It, it, just... it really shouldn't. Like, yeah. this is functional. Um, what am I doing with this one though? So I don't really need this image anymore, do I? So we need to, yeah, but because we need to apply it because what we, the, the for each, we're going to remove it also from the image that we're clicking, right? So oh, what right. we need to do is we need to reapply it to this image. Got it. Okay. So then we will image dot style dot view transition name. And that one is image. Oh wait. Oh, we can say we can actually save the the previous view transition name before the for each. So we save that in like a right. constant or something. And that's going to be image dot style dot view transition name. Mm -hmm. And then we put it back on. And now we just apply that. Yeah. I I'm embarrassed to say that would have taken me days to figure out. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let's try this again. See the and works. these work. They do what we want. Yep. Okay. Come back out here. Beautiful. Nice. Go go back. Nice. Look at it go. I mean, this is gorgeous. Like this, this works so nicely. Um, the the forward and backward buttons don't cause the 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 application of those things. But I, I think I can live with that. Like I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, this is great. Like this this looks wonderful. And so I can see a lot of ways that I would want to continue tweaking this and trying new things and and figuring out more that I can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, do you know off the top of your head? Has there been any talk of like when does this multi-page app transition API come out of uh, like go stable? Do you think? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't heard any dates. Uh, I know they're working on it, and it's been, I think they released the first version in, I want to say, November of last year. Okay. And they've been working on it for, you know, over six months right. while this is in, in like, a behind that feature flag. So uh, I want to say that it's going to be pretty soon because the, the, the SPA version didn't take that long to become stable. Sure. Um, so this, so, you know, this might be hidden browser soon. So as we're as we're kind of running out of time here, just to recap, mm -hmm. the the view transition API that we're using to do this, uh, which is the mm -hmm. same page, we are modifying something based on like hidden visible classes. This is available today in all Chromium browsers, or is it also working in WebKit and Firefox? Only Chromium browsers for now. Okay. I know that Firefox and Safari have sort of uh, been interested in this API, but I haven't heard anything about actually implementing it. Okay, so with this uh, this kind of browser detection fallback, you can double check that the thing is available and then add it progressively. So nice progressive enhancement there. It'll work in all Chromium browsers today. So Arc, etc. cetera. Uh, if you want to use the multi-page view transitions, it currently only works in Chrome Canary behind a feature flag. Uh, but if the precedent of how long it took them to get the, the single page app transitions holds, then we're probably six-ish months away from, from seeing the multi-page app land. Yeah, maybe. yeah, I, I hope so. I hope that's... Yeah. I, don't I mean, wanna, me too, I because... I speak for the Chrome team, but yeah. You know, I... It, <laughs> There are very few things that I get to play with on the web where I just get that like giddy feeling of like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And and one of the th places that I continue to have that feeling is with these new browser APIs. So I just, I'm, I'm so happy to see how 
far the browser has come, how much power we have without having to install third-party libraries, without having to maintain custom JavaScript. Like, this is some incredible stuff. So as we're, we're kind of coming to the end, is there anything you want to make sure people see? Any resources, any demos that, uh, that you want to show off before we run out of time? Uh, I, yeah, so resources, there is a blog post on the Chrome, uh, like I'll share the link. It's the same, probably the same blog post that we shared before, mm -hmm. um, which has all the information you need to get started with this. So I will share the link on the, in chat. um, there is, yeah. So there's examples of how to do pretty much everything you can do with this API. Um, okay. There is also one thing we didn't talk about, which is handling when you transition uh, between elements that have different aspect ratios. Oh. Um, there are some tricks you can do with CSS to actually make that also like a smooth transition. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, if you uh, check my, my Twitter account, I share demos uh, from time to time. Uh, also follow follow Bramus on Twitter. Follow Adam Argyle on Twitter. They also like they work on this API. They share demos all the time. So uh, make sure to check them out. Well, let me hide a couple things here so that I can actually pull up these windows because I'm not logged in on Twitter and apparently you can't look at people's accounts without being logged in anymore. Um, <laughs> you mentioned Argyle. It's Argyle Inc. Yep. Right. Yes, and then who is yep. the other account? Um, Bramus, B R B R A M U S. They nice. are the ones working on this API, so um, yeah, make sure they share demos as well and they share resources. So yeah, just so much exciting stuff happening in the space. Um, yeah, and let me pull up your Twitter one more time so that as I'm talking mm -hmm. about you. Uh, yeah. All right. So this is this is something that I think is immediately useful. I'm going to start using this like today. Like I, I want to start using this <laughs> right now. Um, and for uh, for anybody who's interested, the the SPA version again is is available now in Chromium browsers with a nice progressive enhancement path. Um, Maxi, is there anything else that you want to to say or show off before I do the teardown? Uh, no. Check out the API. Give the team feedback as well. They're always looking for feedback. I was mentioning one of the, you know, the limitations of the API um, and they're working on that. So it's going to become, it's going to just get better uh, over the next few months or years. So your feedback is very important. The team is looking for feedback. They want to build like a robust feature. So uh, if you play with it, make sure you give them a shout. Awesome. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to call this one a success. We're going to go find somebody to raid and we will see you all next time. Moxie, thank you so much for taking some time with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, take fun. care, y'all. Bye, folks.